open letter to my daughter in heaven. Hey kid, it's dad. I hope you're doing okay up there. Today is Valentine's Day. I can't think of a more fitting occasion. As I write this, nearly eight months have passed since you left us. Things have been, well, a nightmare. We're struggling, but we're okay. Time doesn't make any of it less painful, just easier to carry, I guess. But you don't need to worry about any of that. I really hope you're resting peacefully. When I found the love yourself picture you drew when you were little, I knew it was the catalyst of something significant. It's so powerful to me that even at such a young age, you had such a succinct, poignant message to share with the world. Love yourself. So beautifully simple. To me, it doesn't mean we have to like everything about ourselves. It's more about the need to consciously be kinder to ourselves. To treat ourselves as we treat others. It's a reversed golden rule in a way. There's a sad irony to it given the circumstances of your death, I suppose. Still, I'll keep marching forward in life, tirelessly waving the love yourself flag and the message it represents. We are all worth love including self-love. This is the 13th video on my journey with grief. 13 videos, one for each year of your beautiful short life. I can barely believe how much time has passed since I impulsively bought a camera and started wandering around in the woods with it. I've spent the last 12 videos talking mostly about what grief has taken from me and how I've had to adapt because of it. I'm not going to do that with this one. Instead of focusing on what I've lost, I'm going to celebrate what I had. You. My very precious baby. This is my love letter to you. I wish I could stand on the highest mountaintop and use every molecule of oxygen I breathe to sing your praises to the world. I wish I could psychically enter the minds of the billions of other people down here and instantly convey to them what a sweet, wonderful person you were while you were here with us. Alas, I am a mere mortal and I can't do these kinds of things. I suppose a YouTube video will have to do. One thing that became immediately important to me after you died was honoring and preserving your memory. My deep-rooted paternal instinct to love, nurture, and protect you is something I just can't shut off. It's painful having this immense, heavy love and nowhere to put it. Like I said, I want the entire world to know how incredible you are. I don't ever want you to be forgotten. If nothing else, perhaps these videos will do just that capture a moment in time. It's bizarre to think that people might be watching this hundreds of years from now. In the small chance that that's the case and you're one of those people watching this from a future far beyond the year 2024, my name is Matt and I have a daughter named Allison that I love more than anything. A daughter I lost much too soon in life. As arduous as it's been, I'm grateful to be on this journey with grief. I'm not grateful for the loss, just the journey itself. The lessons it's taught me, the places it's taken me, countless wooded trails, winding rivers, endless cliffs, and even abandoned man-made structures, each with a quiet beauty of its own. I feel more connected with this world than perhaps I ever have. Like I said at the start of this project, grief is complicated, layered, and difficult. This journey with grief has given me the opportunity to slow down, collect my thoughts, and try to understand what I've been feeling. Everything I thought I knew about life, death, time, people, anger, joy, and even myself has changed. Only time will tell if these changes end up being for the better. I spend a great deal of time wondering what things are like for you in the afterlife. The number of near-death experience accounts I've read at this point is approaching the triple digits. Between my research and my faith, I have a somewhat cohesive picture of it in my head, but I don't really know for sure, of course. I believe we aren't meant to know while we occupy these human vessels on this earthly plane. I believe the reason that death is so mysterious and permanent to us is that knowing what comes after this would somehow devalue our experience here. Whether a human lives for 10 minutes or 100 years, life is short, and what comes next will sneak up on all of us. I believe I will be reunited with you when my time here is done, and since that's the case, I won't rush it. I'll try to enjoy my time here while I can and show up to heaven with stories to tell you. A father's love for a daughter is really unlike any other phenomenon. It's hard to even articulate. My love for you is practically a force of nature, deeper than any ocean, stronger than any hurricane, brighter than any sun. A love that is rooted in unconditional reverence of your character. 
Before I end this letter, I want to remind you of some of those wonderful character traits of yours. If I had to sum you up in three words, a near impossible task, I would use these three, kind, creative, and funny. Let's start with kindness. You had a bottomless well of kindness within your heart. Whether it was shown to people or animals, you shower the world with kindness, not unlike people in cars throwing candy at a parade. You seem to inherently understand that there was no cost to giving away kindness. You always put others first, helping around the house, caring for your siblings, and even in the days leading up to your death, you were excessively kind to Josh and me. Now I'm not saying you were perfect, no human is, but you gave this world so much selfless love in the 4,830 days that you were here. I'd go as far as to say that the only unkindness you showed was to yourself when you made the decision to end your life though I believe that decision was made largely on impulse. I know that the world was not always kind in return, and the unkindness shown to you by others contributed to your death, but despite that, you were kind to the very end. I'm proud of you for that. Your creativity is also a cornerstone of who you were on this earth. As soon as you could hold a crayon, you were always drawing. We would spend hours outside drawing on the driveway with chalk, you always had a notebook or a sketch pad in your room and even drew in it the day you died. Grandma kept a basket full of paper and markers next to the couch just for you. Not even a dirty car was safe from your insatiable urge to leave your mark on this world. I'm so very grateful for that, my little doodlebug. Art is a window into an artist's soul, a timeless monument of who that person was while they were here. In a way, your incessant creativity will preserve you forever. I can't forgo mentioning your sense of humor. My god, I don't know if I've ever met a human that made me laugh as much as you did. As soon as you could walk and talk, you were constantly being silly and cracking jokes. From climbing all over me like I was your personal jungle gym, to dancing in the store while wearing a panda head, to even just making funny faces whenever I'd try to sneak a selfie with you. Humor was something you had in spades. I hope you're still like that when I see you again. I suppose this letter is dragging on a bit much, so I'll wrap it up. Though 13 chapters in the journey with grief story seems long, my journey has only just begun. This is a life sentence, the cost of having known and loved you while you were here with us. I have always said that I love you and Josh more than anything, now I have to prove that. So I will. I'll keep moving forward, one step at a time, for you. I love you, kid. And in case God lets you see this in heaven, Thank you for watching. As always, be patient, be kind, and love yourself. I'll see you soon.